You're listening to Beyond Technique, the podcast that empowers photographers to bring their businesses to the next level. Hello and welcome to Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, Photofocus, and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young, and I'm joined by my co-host and socially distant buddy, Skip Cohen. Ah. Oh, socially distanced. I we need to we need to go with Bob Coates change in terms. Bob <laughs> wants us all to refer to it as physically distanced physically and distanced. not social distancing. Well, you're in Florida, I'm in Michigan. Because it is well, no, no, it's fit and it is it is physical, <laughs> but if you think about it, it's anything but social distancing we need right now. In fact, we're all trying to get closer. Mm. So true. Socially. It's just the physical issue that gets in the way. So, mm-hmm. anyway, how are you, Shamira? This is this I'm is going to be a fun one I'm today. I'm excited for today. Let's get into oh, it. Oh, I am too. And I'm just going to jump right in here yes. because that's what I always do. But, you know, if you look back when we relaunched Beyond Technique a long time ago, uh, the whole idea you and I had was to talk more about uh, the experiences, the, the things that were unique that were with our guests as opposed to just talking about, you know, their journey as a photographer and today is a perfect example. Um, it's a kick to have J.B. Silly in the house. Now, if you don't know J.B., he's a photographer, he's an artist, he's an educator, he's a super dad, and he's a good buddy and friend to so many of us in the industry. For me especially, it's a blast because he and I met the first year he became a photographer, which was somewhere around 2003, um, he had just graduated, and he was the winner of the WPPI scholarship. So both he and Diet, his fiance, now wife of almost 20 years, were both at WPPI. So when I look at JB's career and all the paths that he's gone down over the years, we've watched him grow, not just as an artist, but um, he's repeatedly walked away with top honors in print competition. Then we watched him grow as an instructor. And I got to re- make sure we remember that uh, we watched him grow as a dad, too, with uh, three daughters now. But the topic today is going to be more focused on the importance of education. JB does seminars all over the world, but there's one that caught my eye just recently that I think is totally unique called Campfire. And all I'll say right now is just think of it as a short summer camp for adults. So as usual, we have no idea where this conversation is going to go, but I know we're going to talk about creativity in and out of the classroom during the pandemic and things he and his wife, Diet are doing to not only stay safe, but continue to service their clients and support the, their family. So, JB, now you can move your lips. Welcome to Beyond Technique. Hey, guys. How are you all? Good to be here. Thank you. And I, I understand you have your cowboy sh- shirt on today. I do. It's it's. Okay. Hidden under another shirt, just in case somebody sees me. Okay, everybody, no jokes about cowboys. I don't want tomatoes tossed at me. <laughs> oh, cowboys! I'm are just cool. a fan. Oh well, JB, we are so excited to have you on the show today, and, yes, and thank you. to talk about not just your business, but I mean your life, and and staying positive with our interesting times um, going on with 2020. And I've been a fan for a long time. And so it's such a kick to be able to talk to you today. And for the listeners who may not be familiar with you and your work, um, how did you get started doing what you're doing today? And how did you end up where you are today? Yeah, great question. Uh, I started in high school, like a lot of people do, just a a basic black and white class. Fell in love with it. Went to college. I was in the uh, Air Force ROTC uh, Corps in college. And I asked my main instructor to be a pilot in the Air Force, what do I need to do? And he said, get straight A's, pick any, any, uh, degree you want, just make sure you get straight A's. So I said, Hey, I'll just do photography. <laughs> Three years later, nine 11 hit. And I decided I didn't want to go into the air force. Mm-hmm. I met a really pretty girl and that was half of the decision as well. So I, I, uh, didn't sign my contract with the air force and I became a photographer. I fell back on my degree like many of us do. And here we are today, 18 years later as a professional. Nice. Wow. Well, I remember giving you advice at that first WPPI where we introduced you to the photographic community and you were engaged. And my advice then was just remember that if a guy does something right and his wife isn't there to see it, he's still wrong. <laughs> That's right. So I just I wanted <laughs> and, to throw that out. I wanted to throw that out there. 
Oh. But the fun thing about watching you and Diet as parents and as artists and as business owners has been that you've never lost focus on one, your family, two, your friends, and three, your skill set. Yeah. So uh, it's over the years, I've, I'll, I'll admit it's been tough. I mean, there's been times that I just want to give it up and quit and go get a, a day job. I've never had a full time job since college. And that, it baffles me. I mean, we didn't mean to get into this industry and, and do this full time for 20 years or 40 years, but we love it so much. You know, there's hard times, there's good times. We're going through the hardest time we've ever gone through as many other Americans and people around this world. And we're being hit hard and it's a rough year for our business. It's the worst year ever for our business. Uh, we have 14 weddings canceled and postponed to next year. Mm. And with that, they picked the prime Saturday dates for next year as well. So that's 14 dates we can't book next year. So we're going to be hit a little hard next year as well. But we're, we're staying positive. We realize that this is going to be temporary. And either we have to deal with it and move on and, and live our lives or do something else with our careers. So we choose to move forward and be positive. What are some of those things that you've done to stay positive? Hey, you know, a lot of things were just kind of cleaning house and saying, okay, these are the marketing things that we're tossing money at and are not working. They've worked for us in the past. And sometimes you just have to learn how to quit. And one big thing was a bridal show. You know, we've done this bridal show in Dallas. It's the second largest in the world. We've done it for, I think, 15 years in a row, twice a year. And it became easy. We just booked all of our weddings off this bridal show and slowly it stopped working. So we have to just learn how to quit things that are not working for our small business. Yeah, I love how transparent you're being right now um, and even vocalizing how difficult this time is because, I mean, we're all in this together. And I know there are so many wedding photographers, well, not just wedding photographers, but all kinds of photographers, anyone listening, you know, that are in the same boat. And, and I'm curious, JB, are there things you were doing to still maintain relationships with your clients, even though they've canceled their photo sessions? Uh, yeah, we've, we've always stayed on Facebook. That's one thing that's really working well for us now. And it has been for a decade now. And it's kind of weird to me going back 18 years, everything was in person. We were doing mm -hmm. bridal shows, we were doing craft fairs, uh, balloon fest. We're trying to show our face and show our personalities and show our work. Nowadays, we're kind of invisible behind our business. It's just a front. It's, it's our imagery that really stands out, and it's not our personalities as much anymore with social media. So we got to stay with it. we got to find those mom groups in our cities. Uh, we have a group in Flower Mound, Texas of 13,000 moms, and we can post something there and fill 10 sessions. You know, you, you just got to find those little groups that appreciate your work and see the difference and keep pushing forward. We would you agree, and I know I know what your answer is going to be here, would you agree that you're working twice as hard to get the same revenue and sometimes less? It's, it's definitely three or four times as hard uh, for less. It's not even the same revenue anymore. It's less for sure. There's so many talented photographers out there. I heard a number that was we had 10,000 registered professional photographers in Dallas and Fort Worth. Wow. And if you do the math with 2 million people, that's not a lot of people per, per photographer. I think it's 200 if I'm doing my math correct. So we really have to stand out and be the top 10% as a professional studio that does this full time to make sure we can stay in business and make sure we have our cost of goods set correctly where we're making profit in our business and we're not just giving away money to our clients. You know, years ago I spoke at the Dallas uh, chapter uh, yes. of what? What's it called Dallas PPA? Yeah, DPPA. Yeah, um, and and I was there because you don't say no who, to um, Elena Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, right. You can't say no, but I was blown away by the talent that was in that room. Not to mention that there were probably, I don't know, sixty, eighty people or more, um, and that kind of supports when you're talking about hey there you know, 10,000 professional photographers in Dallas. The market is outrageously competitive, but one of the things that I have seen happen uh, has been the number of artists because of the pandemic. Um, there's an opportunity for a lot of good leadership here and people that are doing things that are unique, that make them stand out in the community. Um, there's, like I said, it's, it, it, you've got everybody around you hunkering down 
and I've said this repeatedly over the last few months, that hunkering down has nothing to do with, with your business. It's about your health and your family's health. But you have to go just the opposite way in terms of your business, in terms of being out there. And this is a long way for me to get to um, asking you where in the world did the idea of Campfire come up and maybe start by telling us what it is. Yeah, Campfire has been in the back of my mind for over a decade. And unfortunately, being so busy in Dallas for so many years, shooting weddings and shooting sessions, I don't have a lot of time to follow my true passion, which is education. I love educating other photographers to get to where they want to be. And finally, this year, I don't have much going on. I mean, all of our weddings postponed. Uh, we usually have 100 sessions. I think we've shot maybe 27 sessions this year, and 10 of them are just last Sunday. Uh, there's not much going on. So to keep my mind busy and, and keep my mental health sharp, I finally told my wife, hey, let's do this. Let's go full steam ahead. And we got the sponsorship. We found a, a beautiful camp in Marble Falls near Austin, Texas. And we're going to do it. It's a camp for 450 photographers uh, to live and and uh, learn and just be passionate about our craft. And it's really cool. We're all going to stay together in cabins. It's on this beautiful lake, LBJ Lake. And we're going to have top-notch educators come in. Uh, the food's going to be incredible. Our child actually goes to camp there. So that's how we found the camp. And it just feels good. It's, it's going to be a time to just reflect over a really bad year in 2020. And this is going to be in October 2021. So hopefully everything's going to be safe. And get together and just smile again. I mean, I'm probably not going to see any of my photographer friends this year at PPA or WPPI, I'm guessing. So... This is going to be one of our first chances to get back together again and just laugh it out and and uh, be together. Well, I think one of the things that happens, and that that's one of the things we always saw happen at WPPI, for example, there were more good ideas or as many good ideas um, shared over a drink in the bar after a day of workshops than You're there so were right. in the workshops themselves because getting that quality time together I mean, that's just something that, that we all miss. On, a, on another podcast that I was a guest on recently, I was asked, you know, so what do you miss the most? And I said, well, bumping into people, literally. Right. And we're all starving for Imaging USA, for WPPI. And I know they're all going to be online, and there'll be a certain presence there. And, and it'll be good to catch up to a few people here and there in a Zoom room. But it's not the same as sitting right next to a good buddy and saying, so come on, what do you, what have you been up to? Yeah, I agree. We're all just kind of missing that right now. What are some of the key things that you've been seeing or trends in, because you haven't slowed down on workshops. The campfire idea is something new. We're going to talk more about it, but what are some of the things you you've seen are trends that photographers need the most help with? Uh, I would say, and I ask this question all the time in photographer groups, I say, what would you want help with if you had an instructor to yourself? And they all say off-camera lighting. And that seems to be the number one trend I, I see is people just don't know how to use the lights off-camera. So that's one thing I do is tour the country, and it's 10 photographers max per city. We all spread out. We wear a mask. We're careful. And I've just I've canceled all seminar-type workshops. There's no... Marriott ballrooms with 200 people anymore. It's just 10 people max and me. And some of these cities are only two people showing up. Like Salt Lake City was one of my best workshops, and there's three of us and three models. And we had a great time. And the benefit is so huge for a photographer seeking information to come learn hands-on with another studio that's been around for five years, 10 years, 18 years like us, or 30 years. You know, get in there, learn what you can, and soak it up. Now's the time. If you're not busy, you know, See who you can find that you look up to and learn from them. Uh, Christian Lalonde, speaking of WPPI and going out to the bars, he was our wedding photographer. And uh, Anthony Cava, we found them at WPPI that first year. We won that award. Been our best friends, shot our wedding, and then we went up to Ottawa and did a three-day workshop, and it changed our careers. And it was very inexpensive to take their class at the time, and it molded us to be professional photographers and not just uh, photographers with a camera. So education is, is so crucial, and so many people are skipping that part. JB, I'm looking at the page right now for um, describing your campfire workshop. And 
It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty darn cool. Just looking yeah, we're at excited. How you've got the accommodations laid out. Of course, the educational piece. You talk about meals and the cabins, and it sounds like it's going to be such a wonderful group experience. I don't think we asked um, where, and I'm looking at the page, but I want you to say it. Where can folks find out more about Campfire so they can check it out themselves? Yeah, w- registration is not even open yet, and people are signing up somehow. They found a back way in to sign up for the camp, so we're like, whoa, 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 we're not ready. So registration opens on uh, Black Friday, which is next Friday after Thanksgiving, and uh, it is campfireworkshops.com. We were lucky we found that domain, and it's going to be fun. It's The price is either $399, $499, or $599. If you want a land cabin, uh, a lake cabin, or a premium lake cabin. And like I said, the camp is beautiful. It's one of the best camps I've ever seen. I've been to camp as a kid a few times. And uh, it's a beautiful camp. We're going October 11th. I'm sorry, October 8th through 11th. So the weather's going to be really nice in Texas. And uh, it's going to be a great time. And, and don't forget the parties. Total? We're having... We're having massive parties every night. Oh, that's that's going to be the fun part, too. So education during the day, ropes course, swimming, tennis, all the activities are included. And then uh, the parties are included at night as well. And how many people total in attendance? 450 that's max. We again max it out at 650. We decided to keep it small the first year and make sure people can spread out in the cabins. We're not maxing out the cabins with 16 people. Mm-hmm. We're going to max them out with 10. That's fantastic. And we'll make sure and include that link in the show notes too, so that folks can check that out. Yeah. I want to make a comment on, on costs because there's always somebody out there going, Oh, come on. You know, I, I don't have that kind of money or don't they know we're in a pandemic? Um, The pandemic has changed everything in our lives for everybody. And I don't care what business you're in. Well, with the exception of people that work at zoom, um, I suppose uh, they haven't been affected and in a Airstream negative way so much. Has not been affected whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and neither has neither has Xfinity with their movies. Uh, in fact, I rent I went to rent something the other day, and the rental price was nineteen ninety nine. It's like just stop it. Uh, and Netflix, uh, three hundred and fifty new uh, accounts. Right. That's so insane. It, it's been huge. But here's the point I wanted to make on cost for education. Right now, I, and I don't care what it takes, if you know you've got a weak spot, and everybody knows where their weak, weaknesses are, and this is, a, this is the time, and Shiv Verma said it when Shamir and I did a podcast with him a short time ago, that we've got something that, that photographers have never had before. It's called time. We never have enough time. And now, because of downtime with your business, you do have the time to expand your skill set. You do have the time to learn some new aspect and maybe even pick up another specialty and become more diverse as an artist. And I've been saying for years, if you're a wedding photographer, then you may not want to shoot babies and kids, but why wouldn't you want to be there when the first child was born? You've already got credibility with the client. And as the family grows, why wouldn't you want to be there for some of their other needs, whether it's mom and dad with headshots or business shots or product shots? And I'm not suggesting that everybody can be everything, but to expand beyond your core skills right now, the point is you may be sitting there saying, well, I can't afford to spend the money on this particular program, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's campfire or anything else out there. But the point is right now you can't afford not to spend that money and find a way to do it in the same way that you're finding ways to put food on the table and take care of your family. The pandemic is not going to last forever. And when it ends, and maybe it'll never end, maybe there's a combination of hybrid norm we're all going to live in the future. The point is that imaging, especially this year, Photography, I am convinced, is going to be one of the all-time greatest gifts because grandma hasn't seen her kids in nine months. And what could be better right now than and more appreciated than an updated family portrait? And I'm sorry, I got on my soapbox, everybody. But... No, it's so true. I mean, we opened up a small Christmas special that you know we've wanted to do for years. And like you said, we've never had the time to pull out our vintage Airstream and set it up with... 10 trees and lights going across. This is a, a three hour setup each Sunday. And my wife and I looked at each other and we said, it's time. You know, this is the year. 
and we're excited about that part. The rest of it sucks, but we do have the time to spend with our kids and take more pictures of our kids and really think about our business and say, moving forward, what do we want out of our business? Where our business has always been dragging us along for 18 years solid. Mm-hmm. We've always been just playing catch up with our business. And now there's there's not much business coming in, so we can really mold and shape what we want for the future. Speaking of time, this is one of the few times that um, this year, with photographers having so much time on our hands, that we actually have days, weeks, months open for exploring our own creativity. And I kind of want to switch gears and talk about that, um, specifically Platypod, because as we've mentioned, they are a sponsor of the show, and they are an amazing tool for photographers to get out and explore and just be creative with the extra time that we all have on our hands. And so I'm curious, JB, how have you used your Platypod tripod in the past to help with either your photo sessions with clients or just fun creative stuff? You know, they make such a, a unique product that's something a lot of people don't think about. You can't always put a light stand or a tripod somewhere because mm-hmm. the legs, they spread out and it just doesn't fit. So I love using their product where you can just strap it on a tree at a reception or the guest, if they're drinking, they're not going to trip over it. I mean, we've had countless uh, guests trip over our light stands at weddings mm-hmm. and people look at us. I'm like, well, what else do we do with this light? It's got to be up in the air somehow and off my camera to look to look good. Uh, Other times when I'm shooting in a Catholic church and I'm Catholic and I know the rules, we cannot be inside uh, for the ceremony. So I'll put the camera on a platypod, angle it up with a fisheye and remotely just shoot some shots with my iPad. Another time I've strapped it above above a bed for a boudoir session and uh, had the camera shooting down. That way I don't have to hover as a male photographer over a girl in her skivvies. I can step back and say, look up into the camera and just shoot with my, my iPad. So just a few examples So I want to go back to education in terms of the advantage of small classes and and that exchange you get going. I mean, you mentioned that there were only um, three or four of you at a a program you did in Utah. Um, One of the things that, that I think people worry about is that Campfire, wow, 450 people. Are you kidding me? But just share some ideas and things you guys are doing because I know that it's going to have a small session, meet the needs of every attendee kind of um, foundation. Exactly. And people are not going to get people are not going to get lost because they're attending and they're part of a big group. No, you're right. And 450 people on this camp is nothing. I mean, this camp holds a thousand kids. Uh, so half of that just as adults having fun, is going to be the perfect size. It's, I think it's 50 acres. It could be 150 acres, but it's ginormous. It's on a big lake, a uh, ton of property spread out. We're having breakout classes where you can do, uh, photo hikes with up to 10 people with an instructor. And when we bring in our, our instructors, we're not just going to have them teach one keynote class. There's three keynote classes included one each night. We're going to have them do a keynote and then a master class, and then a photo hike, and then a craft class. So they're gonna be on working every single day, two classes a day. So the attendees are gonna have their chance to get with that instructor, one of six classes. Wow. And and when you look at some of those classes, um, I'm assuming that lighting is gonna be a big part of all of this, as well as, I'm assuming, composition, posing. I'm I'm such a doofus, thanks for bringing that up. (laughs) Profoto is sponsoring, we're gonna have six Profoto bays set up. So you can test out the gear. We'll have some outdoor bays. We'll have some indoor bays. We'll have boudoir. We'll have different models for bride and groom together, bride alone. Uh, So Trendy Dresses Accessories is one of our sponsors. They're going to have their beautiful gowns flowing and photographing those as well. So open bays are included. Three keynote speakers are included. Uh, Three nights of combination. All your food, all the entertainment's included. Uh, It's a pretty good price. And it's not about profit this year. It's really just about bringing people together and having fun. Well, this is definitely going to fall under that category of work hard, play hard, because oh, yeah. fun, fun has become a lost word. Um, and there are some of us that continue to have fun, and it's only because, like me, I'm a knucklehead. Um, <laughs> but fun has been lost under the stress of, oh, my God, what's going to happen next? Or, oh, my God, what's going to happen through the election? I mean, if you think about 
what we have been hit with this year uh, in terms of challenges in the world, challenges because of the pandemic, challenges because, I mean, people would, I, I've said to people, if the pandemic doesn't get us, listening to the politicians will. <laughs> um, and it's so frustrating. And just to remind everybody that if you if you think that you're going to wake up tomorrow and there's going to be a vaccine um, from some very, very good resources here in Sarasota, for example, from some of the medical community, um, they're looking there. There's some real great successes coming in or potential success in trials. But regardless, for most of us as consumers, at the earliest, something might be available next spring. So that means we've all got to adapt and adjust. And fun and bringing fun back into your business is another piece of it. And JB, you mentioned something before when you were talking about platypod and weddings. I mean, Bob Davis has developed a fun shot where he sets the camera up at the um, at the very back of the church or temple, wherever they are, and he's got he's got it on the floor on a platypod, and he's got a signature image that he shoots straight down the aisle once everybody is in place. And it's phenomenal. And at the same time, platypod gives you a different perspective. This is the time when we've all got to pivot and we've all got to find a different perspective. Because if you don't, then you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and say, all right, it's time for me to go get a job at Home Depot. And there are too many talented artists out there to lose that. It doesn't mean that you have to give up your business right now. You've got to stay in touch with people. You've got to keep relationship building. I love the way you guys are using Facebook. Uh, do you do anything on in any other social platforms, by the way, using Instagram, Pinterest, whatever else? You know, we've we tried with Pinterest and just kind of failed miserably just on our own. I mean, just since we started having kids 11 years ago, we don't have the time to devote to uh, social media. But Facebook and Instagram are two main sources I don't see a lot of uh, people hiring us from Instagram. I do see people liking our imagery, and I try to reach out to them and, and try to say, hey, I'll be in your city if you want to do a session. But face, Facebook is so easy. And the part I don't like about Facebook, you have to throw money at it. If you have a business page, and we have 36,000 followers on our Facebook business page. We've paid for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a 1,000 of them came organically, but We've had to pay to get those followers over the years. And I'm guessing we spent $50,000 over 12 years on our Facebook page. But when we advertise something for 50 or 100 bucks, it brings us new clients every single time. So we see the results right away. And for me, that's good. I like to see instant gratification. I've always been like that. I like to know that my money's being spent correctly and not just for a bridal show where there's only 400 brides that show up and none of them are looking for a photographer because their friends are shooting their wedding. That's what we started hearing constantly. So we stopped doing the bridal show. JB, what advice do you have for photographers who are just starting out right now during these interesting times? What would you tell them? I would say keep your job, hang on to that as long as you can. Don't just quit your job of 20 years thinking you're going to jump into this and be successful because you're probably not right away. Uh, and if you do want to do it, jump in and work for another studio. That's exactly what I did out of college. I worked for a lady at Dallas, friend mm -hmm. Reisner Photography. And I was honest. And I said, I will work for you for two years at X amount of dollars per hour uh, with a college degree in photography if you'll teach me how to run a business. I know how to shoot a pretty picture. I've spent five years in college doing that. It's supposed to be four year, but I spent five years. Again, I met a girl. <laughs> and I said, I just need to learn the business and how to make money. And she taught us how to make money and how to stay in business. So find somebody that can be your mentor, but don't ask it for it for free. You know, you got to give a little to get a little. That's I had no idea advice. that you worked for Fran. That's, she's the one that told me about the contest, Skip. That's great. Yeah. By the way, for everybody listening, if you're relatively new, that's another great example of how small an industry this is. We are an outrageously incestuous industry. We've that's all right. been to the same rubber chicken dinners together. Many of us have worked at other companies over the years. And you always want to be careful of who you're talking to and not shred somebody you're unhappy with 
uh, only so to true. realize later on that the photographer you're talking to is married to that person's <laughs> um, brother or sister. <laughs> JB, where can folks find you out online? We are at salephotography.com. It's our last name, Salee, S as in Sam, A-L-L-E-E. Or find us on Facebook, JB Salee. Perfect. And we will absolutely include that in the show notes as well. So folks can check out your amazing work. And Skip, where can folks find you? And it's always the same answer. Everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com. You'll also find me at Skip Cohen on Facebook and Skip Cohen on Twitter. And especially because Platypod has been such a big part of my life over the last over a year now. Um, and yours too, Shamara. My other email address is skip at platypod.com. So if anybody's got any questions or suggestions on guests and things we talk more about on the show, um, give us a shout. And as I always ask, where are they going to find you, Shamara? Yes, folks can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. That is my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. We love getting questions, ideas, and feedback because it shapes how we move forward with the show. JB, thank you again. This has been amazing. Good stuff. Thank you guys for having me. I always appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you. We really do. And we appreciate our listeners as well. We want to thank our listeners for joining us today. Please tell your friends about this podcast. Spread the word, especially if they want to improve their photography business as we leave 2020 behind and move forward into 2021. We look forward to having you all with us next time on Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, Photofocus, and Skip Cohen University. 